Hello, everybody, and welcome. I'm Peter Goldstein, founder and chief synergy officer for We Did It That Health, where our mission is to grow the vegan and plant based world by inspiring hopeful curiosity with our friends and loved ones. So we know that if we can be more successful and replace the frustration that we feel in trying to communicate with the people that we care about, about the alternative lifestyle that will support them, their health, animal compassion, a climate healing, the, the environment and, and world hunger, I think they'll be happier and that's the world that we all want to see. So let's find better ways to communicate with them. Let's find ways to inspire them. Let's show them the resources. Let's show them the amazing work that so many people are doing. So uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, come to we did it health and look for the community, create an account and join our community. We have so much going on and so much more coming your way. So with that, I would love to introduce it, Tammy Hay. It is totally my honor. She's such an amazing woman. Uh, she's founder of the Million Vegan Grandmothers and a leader with Climate Healers. And she's going to explain the connections in the earth and our gut and peace and our gut and love microbes and our gut. In her return appearance, she has been with us celebrating the first vegan Earth Day just recently. And look for, for that video on our YouTube channel. Uh, it was an amazing presentation. So Tammy earned a master's degree in life food, vegan nutrition, and has since studied with some of the world's leading integrative doctors. She now teaches others the wisdom of food and medicine because as the founder, the father of Western medicine, Hippocrates, we quote him as saying, let food be thy medicine. So Tammy has spent three decades eating organic and has recovered from severe illnesses like Crohn's and colitis. And this is absolutely amazing. So if you know anybody who's suffering with Crohn's, colitis, other gut issues, Tammy is such a phenomenal resource for that. So Tammy loves long barefoot walks in the woods and cold plunges. She lives in her with her dog, Omni, and also shares her law country home near Edmonton, Alberta with her partner, Paul, and many friends, family, grandchildren, retreat participants, yogis, foodies, and, and plants and sprouts. She shares her home with the sprouts. That's so beautiful. She's the author of several books, including the upcoming Grief Mapping, inspired by her own creative struggles with the environmental and spiritual challenges posted in our present times. So with that, I am so honored to welcome Tammy Hay, and here she is. Hello, Tammy, and welcome. We are so happy to have you with us today. Oh, thank you, Peter. That was an incredible introduction. I really uh, feel very honored to be here and, and to be one of the ambassadors stepping up, you know, as a grandmother and the, the wisdom of the elders that come together to you know, let us know that it isn't a hopeless time. It's a time of the great transformation, right, Peter? That's beautiful. Absolutely. The great transformation. And it's really clear to me and to so many people that the future of human consciousness is vegan. There's, there's just no way that we can keep evolving human consciousness without compassion for animals and compassion for our own health. Well, compassion is our natural innate wisdom. Children are naturally compassionate. And if they had to go kill an animal to eat it, they, they would never do it. They wouldn't be able to do it. In fact, children have stopped a lot of animals, adults from doing it. And it's our natural way. So it's just really coming home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Beautiful place to be home. 
a beautiful place. And in that, my presentation today is, is looking at home in a totally different way. We're going to be looking at the microbes. The microbes were here first, you know, and the microbes teach us. You know, we, we see ourselves often as genes, you know, that we're this DNA strand of collective genes and that we're powerless over so much because it's in our genes. But one of my spiritual teachers and, and nutrition teachers says, what's in your genes? Donuts? Sausages? <laughs> so it's looking at our earth gut connection. We are the earth that we partake in, that we are praise or be poison. And this is my uh, master's thesis work on the microbiome, plant-based nutrition, and and our connection to our earth gut. Because we are microbes. We are much more microbes than we are genes. So yeah. So here we go. Thank you. And next, Peter. This is one of my favorite quotes that's in my book, Earth Gut, the beginning of my book, Earth Gut. You know, Rumi is just such a mystic. And this pretty much sums up it all. Consciousness sleeps in minerals. It dreams in microbes and plants. It starts to wake up in humans. Then in some humans, it says, who am I? What's going on? And ends up concluding the total universe expression. Mm -hmm. So we're more microbes than we are genes. And the reason why this is such good news is because we know that we have the ability to shift these microbes. We have the ability to bring in way more um, beneficial microbes instead of pathogenic microbes. So individually, we're composed of 20,000 genes. And one gene, depending on its environment, can make 200 variations on a protein. Mm. So that's the epigenetic piece of it. So we're genetic, but we know now from so much of the trailblazing people like Bruce Lipton that we are mostly epigenetic, meaning over the gene, meaning that our environment determines what kind of protein expression we have. So collectively, our species is the product of 2 million gene expressions. But as staggering as this number may seem, humanity hosts 40 thousand species of bacteria and counting 30 300 thousand species of parasites 1.5 million gene expressions 5 million types of fungi so we're talking about in our gut here with a total of 125 trillion gene expressions now for the granddaddy of these all we contain 10 million more virus than we are than there are stars so when we see ourselves as being super paranoid and afraid of a virus now i'm not underplaying some of the super viruses that are coming our way but let's get back to the understanding that it's our terrain our inner terrain that bashamp coined it's our terrain not the virus it's the terrain not the bacteria Meaning if we can keep our microbiome so strong with so much beneficial microbes, that including the beneficial virus, a lot of people don't think of the virus as beneficial, the beneficial fungi, the beneficial, the beneficial um, parasites. There are parasites that eat stuff that isn't good for us. Yeah. If we can see ourselves as a collection of bacteria that we're going to feed organic, veganic um, soil, living soil from the plants that we eat, from the wild foraging, and we're collecting in different ecosystems our diversity so that when something comes our way, we've slept, we've meditated, we've walked, and we've stayed so hydrated that we don't have to be so fearful of a virus or a bacteria. Thanks. So our microbiome reflects our earth. Now this is really powerful because it brings us to that awe, you know? Like Peter often says, how do we ignite people's curiosity and awe? 
Well, I propose this. We ignite it by igniting their microbiome, by bringing back their innate wisdom through the microbes. We have three pounds of microbes that carry us around. And it might be more important than every single gene you carry around in your genome. This is by Rob Knight, scientist and founder of the Human Microbiome Project. Microbiome, microbiologists coined the phrase microbiome to refer to the total gene expression. So it's controlling our genes and including our brain in our gut. The bacteria, the viruses, the yeasts, and the parasites, and all the maraud life forms within. So it's pretty neat to know that we go out into an environment, we forage a rose hip and give thanks, and it changes us. We, re we remember a little bit more. We also collect our microbes through our breath. So we're breathing our biome, literally. We're breathing it back into our, our birthright to thrive. Dr. Gabriel Cousins, um, who I was so honored to study with, said, when we eat, we are biting into a living planet. If our eating process is not based on love and compassion, all other actions are bound to suffer. So we remember that civilization has always been as healthy as its topsoil. Composting adds living soil to our earth. Natural composting, like my forest that's been left alone, like sat in a forest where they're gathering up and allowing nature to return. And then also the composting that we do from our scraps, from our, from our piling that we're gonna learn tomorrow in um, right now as we speak, Climate Healers has a convergence on, so we're gonna do a little presentation on composting and living soil. And most intriguing is our microbiome reflects our earth. Okay, yeah. So re regenerating our microbiome through living soil means reclaiming living topsoil. This is key. If we look deeply into the archeological records, we find that large cities that have experienced soil degradation and the collapse of local food supplies. Okay, we're coming back to these local food supplies. You know, when COVID happened, you know, there were more victory gardens since the war, you know, since World War II. So we're gonna start supporting the ur urban population because we are the earth. And knowing this is key for our protection for the protection of the living soil, meaning that it hasn't been sprayed and contaminated with tons of herbicides and pesticides, so there's nothing living anymore. So they have to give all these amendments and inoculants in order to bring it back. But soil knows how to take care of itself when it's fed. And species diversity is returned. And then we can breathe the biome as the ants filled soil. Ants are our greatest soil builders. And the worms return. So let's look at some gut busters here. Stress. So the research I did when I was studying the microbiome is stress can change the microbiome, start changing it to pathogenic bacteria, pathogenic microbes in 20 minutes. So we're not talking a big, huge shift, but really we wanna be aware that we are this collection of chemical, um, synapses, that we are our own inner pharmacy. And that I think it's like something like 200 chemical synapses happening, chemical movements in this body earth gut factory that we have here, natural factory, um, that change everything very, very quickly. So we want to be really aware of what we're bringing into our mouth, what we're bringing into our mind and what we're releasing from our mouth. It's, it's such a huge space and th also through our nostrils. And what else? So we're letting go of, you know, antibiotics are a huge annihilator. So when I looked at the roots of Crohn's and colitis, I had continual ear infections as a child and I was given run round of antibiotics after another. 
And we start to develop something. So we have our, our transient microbes and we have our residential microbes, which are established in the first three to five years of life. And when we're given a lot of antibiotics, some of the research is um, IBD, inflammatory bowel disease, IBS, um, is increased something like 40 some percent if a child has had three rounds of antibiotics before five years of age. So antibiotics are kill life, basically. They're anti against life. Gluten. A lot of people don't understand. They think that if they eat organic gluten, um, it's okay. I have found, having a sensitive gut, that gluten um, can create leaky gut pretty quickly for people. Of course, I get organic is always best. But if somebody has a little bit of a sensitive gut, gluten is a really good thing to stay away from. Alcohol uh, creates leaky gut in about 12 minutes soon as it hits colon lining. Leaky gut means intestinal hyperpermeability, which means that the junctions of our colon, because our body is a self-healing organism, they open up, they become a little looser. That's why when people drink, they actually literally loosen up, literally. And so those nice tight junctions that, that allow um, our toxins to keep moving through and out, they open up a bit. And so this leaky, toxic stuff goes back into our bloodstream. It's the way that the body's trying to protect us from overload in our gut. But then it goes into our bloodstream. It goes into our entire system. So it's something to consider. Cesarean sections are... Um, they're being handed out like there's no tomorrow and, and babies get huge inoculation through the vaginal canal. Why do we get, oops, we gotta go back one slide, Peter. Thank you. Why get bugged by the good stuff? Well, gut bacteria has been linked with their ability to influence mood, modulate neurotransmitters such as GABA, control our short chain fatty acids, histamine, serotonin, and dopamine production. This is a really big deal. A lot of people don't understand most of their serotonin and dopamine. Their good, feel good hormones are made in the gut. From plant fiber probiotics, we consume the mic we consume the microbiome can synthesize short chain fatty acids such as acetate or butrate, which help maintain gut homeostasis. It gets a really big deal. Yeah. So serotonin is made in our bowels. Our microbiome helps us with everything from digesting food, regulating appetite, controlling metabolism, balancing our immunity. I mean, our, our gut is known as our, our gold. Gut associated lymphatic tissue. It's, it's a huge part of our immunity. It, it expresses our genes, it elevates our mood. Up to 90% of serotonin, up to 90% can be made in the gut. The word kefir, the probiotic drink, which can be made plant-based and is made plant-based often, in Russia means feel good. So there's a Harvard study that gut bacteria signaling from the immune cells uh, are the body's first responders. So in an unhealthy gut, the response will be inflammation or releasing the stress molecules in a healthy gut does the opposite. So, mm -hmm. And probiotics mean for life. This can't necessarily be found in a bottle. When, you know, when they do the research on most probiotics, it's become a huge it's become a huge market. A lot of them actually don't have any life left in them. So the one thing that they've researched when they research the uh, our gut, our gut health, is that prebiotics are even more important than probiotics. And prebiotics are all the fiber that we get in this in the plant food. It's so beautiful. So the question is: Can a diet rich in prebiotics fiber, healthy fiber, and probiotics, a diet eaten as close to the living ecology as possible? not only reduce pathogenic bacteria, herbicides, and pesticides, but can also promote a healthy microbiome and a disease-free life, but also be the precursor to our deeper connection. 
So when we get inoculated with the good stuff as we walk barefoot on the earth and we tend to our gardens and our four-legged friends, will it help us connect deeper? Will it help us remember why we're here? Mm -hmm. So what can we imagine creating? You know, in the law of attraction and the energetics of we are what we think about the most. But what if we are what we can imagine? And what if so many people have understood the law of creation? Will we see the rapid return of the monarchs? When I was a child, monarchs were everywhere. And the bees. And humble farmers and backyard gardens growing veganic back into our living earth gut. So veganic means that we don't use any animal products in our organic gardening. And that's where we're heading as far as gardening goes and, um, and food force. Mm -hmm. So wild land returning to the wild. This is a picture of Satna forests in India, and it's an actual authentic regeneration in food forests. So there's such a buzz right now around animal regeneration, but it's actually another, it's another distraction for us because what we wanna use for authentic regeneration is food forests that allow the wildlife to return. We are killing off the ecosystems, and we are destroying the wildlife habitat, the wildlife will come in and be the regenerators for us. Mm -hmm. And then we return the food for us, such as satna, not to animal grazing, but to authentic regeneration. And the question I pose is, if we heal the integrity of our earth gut, will we heal the integrity of humankind? Will we become more humankind? Peace with the Earth Mother is the answer to a healing ecology. Mm -hmm. So living soil. Living soil means we respect soil us. We start to see ourselves as soil. We start to see ourselves as the inner garden, so above as above, so below, so out, so within, so out. Something like that. <laughs> but Rudolf Steiner warned us in his lectures on agriculture that the adultered food of the future would make it difficult for humans to think properly and to act forcefully enough to stop a level of damage to the environment that would jeopardize our very own existence. So think about that. The sprayed, genetically altered, modified food destroys our gut brain, making it impossible for us to act forcefully enough to stop the damage. And we are here to say, we're going to reverse that. We're going to reverse that damage and we're going to come back into our innate wisdom through a healed gut. Mm -hmm. This is a photo I took in Jasper National Park in, uh, by Maline Canyon. The water, the river, you know, the river. Such a beautiful way of reminding us to always flow because we're water. We're actually 99.9% .9 molecularly water because the water molecules are so small. And, and everything that harms us is about stagnation. So when we destroy or divert our natural resources away from living soil, earth, air, water, we sicken our gut, our brain, our body, and give up our birthright. But in the depth of acute inflammation, the journey for complete recovery, and remember all disease has a toxicity and inflammation root, and the journey to complete recovery, even if it feels impossible, is our earth gut connection. And we already know how. Mm -hmm. So food is our most intimate relationship. 
I love these great big sunflowers that were growing in my gardens and the bees were just loving them that autumn. And by deep listening, you know, so many of us have been taught to follow order, not the natural order of the natural rhythm of the pulsation of Mother Earth, but the order of what's going on externally. So we're returning to listening deep, reclaiming our birthright for health, despite the ever-growing incidence of disease. Mother Earth mirrors our microbiome, guides us compassionately towards detoxification. Our understanding of the microbiome's role in health and disease has been groundbreaking. The microbiome is often known as the forgotten satellite organ and is paramount. It's, it's of paramount interest in yielding perspective yet to be fully understood on the modulation of all disease, endocrine function, and gut brain connection through that beautiful vagus nerve. You know, the vagus nerve is like a gorgeous tree. It's got this deep roots in our gut and goes up and through our lungs and our heart and into our brain. And they actually know now that there's like seven to nine microbes surrounding each neuron. And they've actually found neurons connecting with microbes in our gut. So, you know, our gut is our brain and our brain is our gut. And we know that there's much more signaling coming from our brain, from our gut to our brain than the other way around. So the gut is a huge brain. Mm -hmm. And the human gut actually dictates our, our path, what it fundamentally means to be human. So again, living thriving soil means a living thriving gut and sovereign thinking brains. This degeneration of brain health needs to stop and it can because microbes may change quickly via food, thought, stress, chemical exposure and sleep. They react to our environment such as chlorinated chemicals, medication, medications in our water, the standard American diet, loss, loneliness, processed food, electromagnetic pollution, they thrive on the opposite. Mm -hmm. So we know that children that have a childhood pet create healthier children. The dogs bring in all kinds of microbes and the children start to collect more of a diverse microbiome. In the beginning we're microbes, ever-changing, diverse, life-giving. We are mostly microbes with a multitude of bacterial gene expression, depending on the environment. Our gut reflects our earth, which we can either praise or poison. Mm -hmm. I guess that's the piece, you know, we are the earth. So we're going to return to nature farming, forest gardens, forage bollocking, bollock through the forage. You know, pick a little bit of a rose hip here. I love putting wild rose petals in my salad. I've yet to dig up like the Aboriginal people did of my land or the uh, First Nations is the, I have a lot of cattails around here and they used to dry the cattail roots and grind them into a really high mineralized flower. That's gonna be my, my gift uh, this year. But the basis of nature farming is the appreciation for the power of living soil, which is the key factor that makes the system sustainable and resilient. So providing the substance to our land and leaving forests alone to regenerate creates a resiliency so we can take on what's coming at us. Mm -hmm. Resiliency. The personal is the political and every action matters. So veganic nature farming works sim symbiotically with nature's natural law. One mind, one earth, one people. It is based on the understanding that the personal is the political and how we do one thing is how we do everything. And deep peace is the karmic effect of taking care of the whole. I always like posing questions to myself 
and to others. Will we allow ourselves to feel deep in our bellies the intuition that food is medicine? Will we allow it to direct us to whole food? Black, gold, growing vegetables. So I like to tell everyone, every action matters. So I sprout in jars and I show people how easy it is. So go get your sprouts and sprout it out. You know, I have a song, sprout, sprout, sprout it all out. <laughs> but you just put a little bit of seeds in jars. You, 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 you drain them in the morning. I use, a, I, I buy a big roll of screen and I rinse out pieces. I cut it into squares. I use the top part of my lid. I'm giving a little demo on, on my convergence tomorrow. And we always have a jar of living food and sprouts, compost and re-earthing and earthing to the earth. We get the magnetic force of the earth when we get barefoot on the earth. Gardening, spirulina is such a high vibrational protein and is basically carbon neutral. Foraging is awesome. It helps us connect with what our ancestors knew, how to collect food from the forest using glass jars instead of plastic. And I just put EM in here. EM stands for effective microorganisms. And when I studied at the Tree of Life, um, uh, the late John Phillips, who I would like to uh, say thank you and, and was really encouraged me to write Earth Got the Story of Peace, Love and Microbes. Um, he shared the miracle of effective microorganisms. You can find it on um, Theraganics website, and uh, reach out to me and Peter if you want more information on, on EM. But it, these effective microorganisms were downloaded to, to a doctor in uh, Dr. Hinga in Japan after Fukushima. He wanted to know uh, they were downloaded from Kuan Yin as a way to clean up all the radiation after Fukushima. But they also clean up all the toxins in our body and in our environment, and they help regenerate soil really quickly. So it's something to be really curious about. Mm -hmm. And compost, our birthright to regenerate plants and re-earth. It's our birthright. It's our birthright to know how to do this stuff. Yeah. And forage food from unsprayed wildernesses feeds a healthy flora. And I spoke of this already, you know, the commonly ex accepted germ theory we need to move out of because it, whenever something puts us in as a victim, we're not empowered. And all of, all of the work on we did it is about empowerment. We did it back to health. So mm -hmm. thank you, Peter. So this was my first book I wrote. Um, uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful combination of science and my story and meditations and poetry. Um, it's called Earth Got the Story of Peace, Love, and Microbes. And I healed very late stages of Crohn's and colitis. And I just want us to all know our individual unique contributions matter speaking through story, documentaries. They say that the number one reason people go vegan is they watch the documentary. So uh, uncontaminated science that Climate Healers is, is showing us and, and we did it, uh, we did it, is showing us through interviews and, and gathering. Our veganic backyard victory gardens, urban gardens, so many people are, are joining collectives to create urban gardens in these food deserts, you know, thank you people. Indoor gardens and sprouting, advocating activism. The grandmothers, the million vegan grandmothers are writing a lot of letters right now. And never ever forget the power of prayer and meditation. It's where we get our inspiration and, and our regathering. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And earthing and happy microbes for all earthing, earthlings. I'm going to read this little poem that we'll end with. On Mother Earth I stand, barefoot and pregnant with possibilities. Through my souls, I remember my soul. 
back through ancestral twines, microbial memory alive. On sweet mother earth I kneel, dandelion cleanse a morning harvest as bohemian wax wings return as one, their unity of movement never forgotten. Trees trilling of song, a thanksgiving sound for last year's harvest, their fermented feast. On Mother Earth I lay and see a time not too far away when the power of love is greater than love of the love of power. And we give thanks for knowing that this is so. Thank you, Peter. I'm complete on this slide presentation. I can't hear you, Peter. <laughs> okay, I, I, um, uh... Sorry about that, and I am back. You can hear me now, I expect. And uh, that, that was such an amazing poem and such a beautiful presentation. And um, your contributions are amazing. I mean, you're, you're such, a, such a role model. I mean, imagine healing Crohn's disease. And, and I mean, it's just unheard of. And with, with Western medicine and, and Western uh, medications and doctors and uh, you know the, the your medical journey is amazing and and your spiritual journey and your presence and everything I mean how uh, tell us a little bit about your journey with with your health if you don't mind your what did it take to to heal Crohn's disease and, and colitis oh thanks Peter well you know, I was at an all-time high with my stress. I wasn't aware that I was stressed. I was I was moving pretty fast, you know, um, moving faster than the speed of life, for sure. And um, I was in my early 40s, and I had recently been separated, and I was in a new relationship uh, with somebody that lived distance, and I was trying to keep up with him. Plus, I had a full-time business, and I had three teenagers, and um, an acreage to care for. And um, and I was just flattened. I had always had a little bit of gut issues. My mother, when I was 10 days old, was rushed to the hospital with a brain aneurysm. And they didn't know what to do. Uh, they didn't have any formula. I don't know when formula came out, but we certainly didn't have access to it for whatever we raised in, uh, in the bush in Northern Ontario. And um, I was put on carnation evaporated milk and how the story went is I cried 24 seven. She was, so all of a sudden my mother was taken away. Um, I didn't have access to her. My grandmother took care of me and I cried all the time. So I had this huge allergy to dairy and a lot of people uh, don't understand that we're all actually allergic to dairy because it's not just the lactose, it's the casein in dairy. The protein molecules are made to make a calf like over a thousand pounds in no time. And they're, they're not meant for the human body. And everyone reacts to dairy to some degree, whether they're aware of it or not. And plus it's all tied up with so much death and suffering, you know. So I was given this milk and I always, then I started getting continual ear infections, which is really, really common. Uh, dairy allergy and children with ear infections and that sort of thing. So then I was put on quite a few antibiotics, rounds of antibiotics. So fast forward, um, I had to really kind of take care of my health, but I didn't, my, my digestion was always a little bit compromised. The one good news is that kept me alive and being able to recover quickly is that I was raised in the bush and I spent a lot of time catching pollywogs and climbing up trees and and chasing butterflies. And so I had a really beautiful, diverse residential microbe, microbiome. And so I was able to keep recovering. So fast forward to this really stressful time in my 40s. I had already been eating organic because my son had a lot of allergies when he was five. And my girlfriend said, try organic. 
it's like genetically modified food was just taking over the world and they genetically modify it so they can spray so much chemicals on it it won't die it kills everything else so it's kind of like this way of you know completely annihilating our food but not but it kills the weeds but it didn't kill our food because it was genetically modified so my son had all these allergies i put him on organic food and the allergies all went away and his attention deficit went away and his behavior issues went away and his ability to concentrate um, increased. And I was like, wow, just going organic. We were still eating flesh food uh, at that time. And in my 40s, I was at an all-time high with my stress level and my human doingness. <laughs> and I um, and I thought I had a really bad flu that never went away. It lasted for over a month. I got very, very thin. And fast forward a year, I finally went and got a scope. I was diagnosed with colitis. Um, my gut still, I couldn't get my gut in balance. So then they diagnosed me with Crohn's. So the difference is colitis is just in the small intestine. Crohn's is in the whole, um, the whole digestive tract. Um, and Crohn's can eat a little deeper, uh, kind of start to disintegrate the entire colon lining pretty easily. Um, so the diagnosis went from ulcerative colitis to Crohn's. Um, I was in the hospital off and on, mostly just getting dehydrated I, or getting hydrated after being uh, severely dehydrated. And I knew I was supposed to go somewhere. I had this dream that I would be okay. I had this near-death experience. Um, my potassium levels got so low, my daughter found me on the bathroom floor and I was told I would never be sick again. I went to Hippocrates Health Institute for a three-week transformation program and I had been a long-distance runner in my human doing. And when I went there, I couldn't even walk the beach. Like I had went from being a long-distance bush runner to not even being able to walk the beach. That's how, because inflammatory bowel disease takes you out very, very fast. And three weeks after going to Hippocrates and drinking wheatgrass and doing therapy of all kinds, including group therapy, talk therapy, infrared saunas, hot and cold plunging, nature walking, meditation, and amazing food, I went for a half an hour run three weeks later. And I was like, oh my, this is it. And I made this vow that I would write a, I would write this book of my journey and I would continue studying. So then I went on and studied at different wellness centers through the States and ended up at Tree of Life in Patagonia, Arizona with Dr. Gabriel Cousins and the Essenes and studied the original Essene live food diet and nutrition. Mm -hmm. And here I am. <laughs> And I am so glad you have. You're you're amazing, and what an inspiration to people. And and I would love for everybody to know that there, there's really no reason to be suffering with gut disease. And and at, at least most of it, if not all of it, can be can be dealt with 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 lifestyle, with food. Certainly, it's not just food, but stress management and and rest and exercise. And it's the whole lifestyle that's so powerful that it's, it's just crazy how how off humanity is right now from what we can be and, and would be if we take care of ourselves a little better. Well, um, the the gut microbiome switching well it's which is all part of crohn's disease and part of everything is um i i was as i was listening to you i was wondering the term um uh, it, it gut, gut intelligence or a feeling in my gut or you you mentioned about intelligence in the gut can you can you elaborate a little more i mean it seems like this is a new frontier in medicine it's a new frontier in so many ways and so much intelligence in the gut um it it just seems like it's it's something that intuitively people have known for for a long time and now we're finally getting the science about it all yeah, well, there's so many experts researching this. You know, a couple of decades ago, it was just all brain research. You know, let's just really understand the brain. And then through that research, they understood that it's the gut 
that informs the brain more than the other way around, which is really interesting. And it really leaves that curiosity because, you know, who can really define what that is? But we know it when we feel it in our gut. We know when we feel good, you know? I mean, one of my teachers says nothing tastes as good as feeling good feels, you know? And we feel that in our gut. We get that gut intelligent reaction, you know, that gut instinct that we've kind of been told not to listen to, but we do know. And we will come to a time in our lives where we will be able to just touch a piece of food and know whether it's it's our nutrition, our medicine or not. It doesn't matter whether it's somebody else's medicine. It might not be ours. And that's that deep intelligence when, when our gut is so strong with memory and health and we've collected so much beautiful, diverse, microbial, um, beneficial microbes that we start remembering who we are and what we need because the medicine for one person is not the medicine for another and we're biochemical individuals so we're always changing and you know i'll give an example i have a couple food books and one of them in one of my food books i i um one of my recipes that everyone loves my power balls i make and i call them woohoo power balls because my grandson when he was two and a half he used to come in and go right to my freezer because I would I would cool them down on a big tray in the freezer and he would pull them out and they're loaded with good fats and nuts and seeds and dates and you know and he would pull them out and he would go woohoo like you see the whole tray and for about a year he couldn't get enough of these power balls and then whatever there was in those power balls whether it was the good omega-3 from the hemp hearts or whatever it was in there, he collected enough of what he needed at that time. And he wasn't really that interested in needing too many Powerballs. He would have one periodically, but he knew because he's still young and he has access. Mother has enough wisdom to let her children choose because they don't have a lot of bad choices in, in this choosing to choose what they feel like. So if if they're, if supper is being made and they don't feel like squash soup or whatever else is being served, Hadley will go, I don't want that. I want an apple and a banana and I want some water. And she lets them choose. And I think about that. I think about how often I'll eat something cooked or what's right in front of me when really I just want to crunch into an apple and maybe put a little bit of organic almond butter on it or some tahini or, you know. So we return back to who we truly are. And one of the main pathways to that is hydration. And I know we talk about hydration a lot, but the brain only has to be 2% dehydrated for us to start to get a little fuzzy. It hardly takes any. And the majority of us, like the work I did with Dr. Zach Bush, is the majority, he says he never sees anybody come into his clinic that's that is ill, that is super hydrated. And he does something called a, a, um, a phase angle test with people. It's the most, um, and I have one of those that I use with people, um, but it's one of the most effective tests to test cellular hydration. And if we stay super hydrated, we can continue washing out the inflammation, continue, then our body's like that river that's always flowing instead of the stagnant pond that starts to get a little smelly and old. You know, we want to be the river. We want to be in the river. We want to stop holding on to the shore. You know, it's, the river's moving too fast right now, Peter. We got to join in. Absolutely. We don't want to be a stagnant pool. That's that's so amazing. I've been I've been feeling tired and and I noticed that when I drink more, that's that's really what I need. And and that's that's perhaps the most important part of feeling good and feeling sharp and and feeling focused. So thanks, thanks for that. Um how much water should we be drinking? Well, you know, there's all kinds of little rules like per body weight, you know, per pound, you should, but you know what we need to do is we need to really pay attention again to get that innate wisdom, no less than three liters a day. Okay. 
but it needs to be in a structured form. So what happens is a lot of people, they drink tap water or they drink water that doesn't have the molecular structure anymore. It's been really processed. Maybe there's, you know, we're finding lots of chemicals in our drinking water now. So if people can find a way to structure their water and remember vegetables and fruit are exactly structured water. Organic, veganic vegetables and fruit are almost all water. When you eat a cucumber, it's 98% water and the water in it is structured. It already knows what to do in your body. So one of the things I teach people, if you don't have a juicer or you don't want to, you know, use all that pulp and waste, just have a really good blender and cut up a cucumber in the morning and a piece of lemon and maybe a half an apple and blend it with a liter of water, a liter, a half of water, just a, maybe even just a liter, blend it, strain it. Okay. And then your body doesn't have to deal with the fiber. We're in our greatest detoxification state till 11. We always want us 11 or 12. We always want us with the detoxification state. So then we, we strain that liter of, because the apple and maybe the piece of celery cucumber help the body remember because they have the structured water in them. They help the body, they help the water remember the structure, okay, and the body. And then we drink that and we take that little bit of pulp we strain, we put it back in the blender, we add another liter of water, we make ourselves a smoothie that we're gonna drink next. So we might start with our lemon water, or we might start with our structured blended water. Then we take that little bit of pulp, we put it in, maybe we add some frozen berries, maybe a little bit of spirulina, hemp hearts. We blend up a smoothie. That's another liter of water, but with a little bit of other stuff in there. And I guarantee if people do that in the morning, have their liter of structured water with a little bit of vegetable memory in there and then a smoothie at some point in the morning, it really uh, balances the energy for the day. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. So let me uh, help me understand here. Structured water. So you're taking water and putting just just a little bit of uh, you said cucumber and lemon. So so uh, just so meaning what I'm trying to say here is that most of it is still water, but there's there's a little bit of cucumber and lemon in there, and the water, the content, the the cucumber, the lemon structures, the rest of the water is... I, well, it's a hypothesis. So when I was talking to Dr. Gerald Pollack from the uh, Washington University, he wrote The Four Phase of Water, a must read. And I said, do you think it's even possible? So the fourth phase of water, what they discovered scientifically is that there's this, they call it the easy zone, exclusive zone. Okay, easy water. Okay, exclusion. So what happens is, is when water is structured, it goes towards the structure um, molecular and it pushes out the bad stuff. Okay. So I said, do you think that if I take a liter of water and you know you want that water to be as purified as possible, you know, and then I add some a piece of organic celery and a cucumber and a piece of lemon, all organic and I blend it in there, do you think that it helps the water that's, you know, my maybe my purified water that's not perfectly structured, do you think it might help its structure? And he goes, I don't see why it wouldn't. But, you know, we haven't tested it out at his university lab yet. I'm just saying that when people do it, they feel better. It gives them a little bit more energy than just, than just the water that they're drinking. So, um, you know, I, I call it the study of one. Be the study of one. So <laughs> but what I'm really curious about is why when we know we feel better when we drink more water, why we don't love ourselves enough each day to do this? Why we make other things more important? So that's a question I'm, I'm just curious to, to put out to all the listeners. It's like, can we love ourselves enough to at least continue to support that we're water bodies to help us remember mm -hmm. well that's beautiful and and uh, you you pose such a great question i i would 
I would love to participate in, in finding the answer to why is it that we feel so good with something and yet we we don't indulge in it enough. And certainly drinking drinking water, drinking lemon water, drinking drinking tea, it feels so good and yet um uh, I don't. I don't always drink as much of it as as I think I would like to. And uh, interesting. Well, but so water. I mean, I've noticed. Uh, is it Dr. Amoto uh, in Japan who who did some amazing work with water? Where where he he was a photographer to help help me. Uh, if, if you're familiar with his work, right? Um, so he was is he a photographer a doctor what he he took some pictures of water crystals when he would bless water and curse water and freeze it and and take pictures of the crystals and um and and, and the crystals are amazing he published a book of of water crystals and the blessed water the crystals were beautiful and and the water that he would curse the the crystals would would just be really really yucky looking <laughs> so, um can can you can you say anything on, on his work or are you familiar with his work yeah dr emoto um, messages in water so yes he was showing the difference between a, a, a frozen crystal molecule that had been blessed and one that had been uh, talked negative to. Also music. He also showed the difference of music, uh, enlightening music and chanting versus heavy rock and swearing music. And and it, it destructured or structured water. And then they also did some live, um, you know, blessings around bodies of water. A bunch of people from Emoto's group uh, would go and bless water and start to watch the water purify. Well, this is maybe the, the lead way into finishing our conversation, Peter. Um, I would love everyone, everyone to, you know, I, I was asking my beloved partner, Paul, I, I just, I've, I've manifested the most magnificent partner this last year, I'm telling you. He's been a real gift. And um, yeah, he's been a real gift of a water body to share. Uh, and a uh, brilliant mind and heart. So this is where I would like to really invite people. This is my takeaway. This is my takeaway, and I hope is your takeaway. I've been a registered massage therapist, somatic body worker. For 20, I'm going into my 25th year. When I get people to come into their breath, when they get on my table and to think about something that really relaxes them and a beautiful feeling and memory and to bring that into their system with their breath. Then very shortly into the treatment, the most, their shoulders start to tighten up, their neck tightens up. And I say, are you thinking? And they go, oh yeah, I was just started thinking. And I said, I want you to consider something. Most of your thoughts don't help you relax. I'm wondering if those 60 to 70,000 thoughts we have a day, you want to invite them to love you. So I would invite everyone to understand that you are water, your water, your earth, your soil, your air. And you're, you're so much more than that, you know? We're the, we're the cosmos in the biome. And if you are mostly water, what messages when we know that when we give ourselves negative messages, it pollutes our water body? What messages do you want to be telling yourself? Because no one could help or heal you as much as you can heal yourself through your loving messages to my, yourself. I am kind, I am good, I am enough, I am hydrated, I am happy, I am whole, I am holy. Thank you, Peter. 
Thank you. That's that's so beautiful. What a beautiful way to end this. And with that, I want to thank everybody for joining us. And Tammy, your your work is amazing. You're such a beautiful person and you bring so much to this world. So thank you for all you do. And everybody, thank you for joining us. And I look forward to seeing you next time. All right. With that, namaste vegan. Namaste vegan. Thank you very much, Peter. Thank you.